Hitman Full Review Part 2. Let's start with my favorite thing, weapons. Speaking as someone who loves guns but maybe not having them in the house, this has got to be one of the best things about this game. I especially enjoyed the attention to detail regarding the sniper rifles. If you're taking an especially long shot, you'll notice that you can see the crosshairs move as your character breathes. And I love how as you get better rifles and stocks, etc., you notice this wobble decreasing. Now, this may not be exactly how sniper rifles work, but it's a fun element. Just a little side note, when firing an actual rifle, one is advised to take a deep breath and then release it. As you finish exhaling, you should squeeze the trigger. I've done this in real life, and it's something I miss about the experience in Hitman. It would be nice if we could get a mechanic like this. Just a thought for future releases. Next maps. This is one area where the game really shines. One map which really stands out to me was Hokkaido from Hitman 2. It illustrates perfectly what I'm getting at. The latest Hitman seems to continue this tradition in that it's like this love letter to architecture, design, and landscape. These maps are really interesting and beautiful. Also, there are all kinds of fun little easter eggs and secret surprises. Dartmoor is especially fun. Additionally, the way the maps can be used to strategize, kill, or maim is such an enormously redeeming feature for the game. Next, replayability. I think what makes stealth games like this so addictive is that there seem to be be just enough moving parts to give a strong sense of chance. Obviously, games like this are pretty predetermined at the moment, but there's enough going on that it doesn't always feel like it. That element of chance, and also the very real experience of finding the unexpected, is something which really enriches gameplay. Combine that with a healthy dose of violence, creative assassination opportunities, new weapons and spawn points, and you've got a game with levels that even after many playthroughs keep you coming back for more. Summary. To be really frank, this doesn't really feel like a brand new game so much as it does a really kick-ass DLC, one which I am greatly enjoying. Having said that, when it comes down to the question, should I purchase this game for Switch, I think I'd have to say yes. If you like stealth slash assassination games, then this is absolutely for you and you will enjoy it. Uh, recommended though, get a good internet connection. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching. As always, I'll be right back. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Hi, I'm Editing Ben. And I've played the game a lot more than Video Review Ben has, and to be honest, I think I need to revise my opinion. The dropped connections in this game are a lot more prevalent than I thought they were, and I would have been okay with forgiving that if it had just been my connection. But it turns out that this is happening to a lot of people. Um, after doing a little digging, it seems to be happening across all consoles, and that is pretty frustrating. And it also means that regardless of where you are or what your internet speed is, IOI Games is really not giving their customers the servers that they deserve, and that's just frustrating and shitty. So ultimately, I'm going to say don't. Don't buy this game. Frankly, it's hard enough to play on weekends, and if you bought this game, there probably wouldn't be space enough for you on the servers anyway. They're selling a game for a very AAA price, and frankly, that does for AAA service. And if you intend to make a game that requires people to play online, then you better damn well make your servers good. Okay, now I'm going to climb off my soapbox, and as always, thank you for watching, and I'll be right back.